Oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. How's everyone doing? And I can't believe we are on the final final of Unreal Be Ornament. Crazy. Insanity. Insanity. Hey Morphia. No? Who are you? Weeping J. With the Anarchy. Anarchy. As in Star Wars? I'm on the high ground. Um, I was. Um, oh, look at that. Some Chinese person have followed me. That's pretty cool. Um, yeah, I was uh, watching Pacobra. He's streaming at the moment. Uh, AKA Black Sable. That was his nickname. His new nickname. Anyway, he mentioned like, "Oh, I'd, I should do design sometime." And it's a, f it's a, it's a <laughs> black sable. I just talked about you. I feel like I should say something smart. Captain Boss, how's it going? Good morning. So black sable here said, "I haven't done designs in a while." And yeah, it worked. Now you know how to do it. Oh yeah. So he mentioned I haven't designed. I should design sometimes. So that would be interesting. Little does he know. Over the years we've done actually a lot of it. And I was thinking, should we go back to designing? Do a lot of design streams. Because for a lot of streams lately, it's been a lot of painting. Painting, 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 painting. I'm kind of getting a little bit bored about it. Yeah, it's fun to draw new, um, new paintings every day. But maybe we should, maybe we should jump back to designing. I think that could be fun. It's a good change of pace, I would say. So, um, uh, let's do. Um, Let's open the uh, Hey Gria, what up? Hey Yannis, how's it going? So, I think Let's, let's, um, let's, um Let's open the topic up. You can you can suggest whatever you want, and I'm gonna try to wrangle it into an idea and a concept, and we're gonna develop the concept. Um, yeah, let's do it. Let's do it. Like let's do that. Let's let's do it like that. Let's see what happens. Right? We're gonna. Um, I don't think I'll go back to like uh, CG Master Academy level of breakdown, uh, but let's let's design. Celestial deer. That's pretty cool. Alien mechanic. That's cool. All right. That's cool. That's interesting. Hey Steven, Irina, Sophicium. Hey, who are you get Sophie? Robotic spy bird. Pretty cool. All right, Bruno Romanos. That's good. So, Sophicium. It's the how this works is you suggest a topic. I'll roll a dice, and we'll see what I'm gonna draw. So we got um, Celestial Deer, Alien Mechanic, Robotic Spybird, Incinerated Within Spacesuit, Shadow Alchemist, Robotic Geisha, 
a lot of cool topics. Right, celestial deer, alien mechanic, robotic spybird, incinerated within a spacesuit, shadow alchemist, robotic geisha. That's six topics. Ego. All right. Then we've got seven. Uh, indestructible. <laughs> okay, fine. Even though it's the final topic. You cheater. Hey, Pro42, how's, how's it going? What's good? All right. Um, let's roll the dice. Uh, it is number two. And number two was Alien Mechanic for Captain Bounce. Okay. Okay, okay, okay. Alien Mechanic, Alien Mechanic. Oops. Yeah. <laughs> All right. Um, so, alien mechanic. First of all, we have to define the alien mechanic, right? What is it? Is it floating, flying fish, multi-armed, whatever? You know what comes into my mind. I kind of was thinking about a sort of flying squirrel mechanic, uh, squirrel manta ray mashup. As in, it's not really uh, standing. I felt like I don't want to do a humanoid, so I removed the humanoid from the possibility. So I saw, saw this kind of almost like a manta ray squirrel mermaid that's kind of floating around the spaceship, fixing. Uh, it will be line crosshatch today. Uh, Matt <laughs> Ray Squirrel, exactly. So the idea was like I saw it, the mechanic, right? Like a like a genderless thing with arms like that, the manta ray body, and squirrel. I, I'm I'm un, I'm unsure about the tail. I'm kind of going. Oh, it should be maybe be translucent. So that's the, like the starting point, right? So we can see the arms, we can see mechanics. There's really not mechanoid, it's organic. Um, and it doesn't have any legs, um, which then indicates it's always flying. So the idea here then is like, okay, how do we plus this design? What design-wise can we introduce to make it cool you know like what is the selling point what is the wow factor what is the thing that when we see it first of all one of the definitions is is it a, a acting character i would say yes um how far i explore my mental image i try to see it like it try like zealand try to imagine a character in a movie you know judge dread have if you have seen judge dread you can probably place him right you probably see him in an animation or or moving or imagine um the imp mission impossible tom cruise guy right when i say that guy you probably get an image in your mind of um what he looks like how he stands um so that's kind of what I try to do when I do these kind of uh, when I get a topic like this or I get a brief of a design. When when I read the brief, I can cycle images based on the principles that they provided, right? So let's say like you have to, um, so you have to see like a snapshot of a. Or uh, in, in, in game development, there is this function or this uh, step in production called VSD, which is a vertical slice demo, 
which is all the layers of a cake in isolation, like a little slice of cake that it will show where potential investors that look at it go, oh yeah, we like that idea, let's do the whole cake. So you have all the layers, what is the cake, right? But you don't have the whole cake, you just have a slice of it, you have a taste of it. Um, so what I try to do when I get a brief and I read the brief is I, I try to make as many different VSDs in my mind as possible. So in this instance for the alien mechanic, like I, I knew that this cake wouldn't include legs because I didn't want to design something that had legs. So that was removed from the, the options, right? Because I thought about it before while I got the topic, but I was like, no, nah, I don't want to do legs. So, so then I thought flying or, or I mentioned when I was playing around with the idea, I mentioned underwater. So underwater was manta ray and, and mermaid, but I, it needs to be a mechanic and it needs to be alien. So that means space. Um, so I'm, I'm kind of mashing things up, right? Uh, and based on those principles, you can go, is it more mermaid or more manta ray? Is it more alien <laughs> or is it, more space. Uh, and without those principles, you can play around with it. And, and the, for those subscribers that uh, watched my um, um, art department talk, when I did the, the whole robot um, brain exercise, um, was, you know, like you imagine a robot, uh, it is, uh, you know, or now it's an assassin robot and so on and so forth. Um, so for those who watched, for those subscribers that have seen it, because it's available for all subscribers, um, you will know what I'm talking about, right? So the idea that I'm cycling through different uh, ideas based on on the parameters I give it. So for example, a mechanic, is it more than one arm or two arms, right? So if it's only two arms, my mind will construct a character based on two arms. But if I tell you now, for example, if you have a, a creature or a mechanic, alien mechanic in your head, and I'm telling you this mechanical or this mechanic, alien mechanic has to have five heads you automatically start to configure um, your mental image differently, right? So it's those kind of things that I'm doing when I get a topic. And it's not that I'm fully developing the idea, but I'm developing the idea based on principles. So I threw in these, these um, I guess algorithms when I was playing around with the th with the thoughts in my head of what it, what is this alien mechanic right so I, I gave myself some sort of restrictions because it's a very open topic so I would I would usually professionally I would get the topics uh, from the client they would say oh it sits in this world it is it's called the mechanic is called Jack Jack is a blue bird alien and then you go, all right, bluebird, alien, jack, what, what do I think about when I hear jack and bluebird? Bluebird, maybe it's a beak, or maybe it's a lot of feathers, or it is a, the bird boob, which has blue feet, you know, all these, all those three parameters, <laughs> those three parameters alone can make you think differently. Uh, Irina French, if you're a subscriber, you should it should be in videos. Hey, Orian, how's it going? Lynch, what intensive practice you did to put that fantasy creature proportionally good in space? Um, right, that comes. That brings another uh, different faction, uh, um, faction factor into play, and that is uh, design. Right? Uh, so what I was talking about before about uh, putting all these uh, elements together and generating ideas is design, but the narrative design. 
what is it why does it do what it does how does it do it and uh, why does it do it so yeah so you let just let me wrap up that idea about cycling uh, images and and um, Zelin saying, uh, and it kind of goes into Irina's question of, as well. Um, like with all things, you can't do anything well until unless you practice it, right? And my ideas, or my my ability to see an image in my head at the beginning was, of course, um, not so good. But the more I practice it, the better I get. So it's the same with like uh, uh, what Irina said here. Like, oh, I would love to join in the topics, but uh, I can't do it without reference. I would say do them anyways, depending on what you want to what you want to do, right? What you want to do as a profession, Irina. So I assume you want to be more of an illustrator, but it take the challenge of something. Draw something generic. Draw an alien mechanic. But what your practice should then be, you shouldn't worry too much about the design. Do something generic. No one in the end cares, right? And I don't care about my own alien mechanic, right? It's, it's about practice. It's about uh, freeing yourself to be creative. It's about doing something over and over and over again and be getting better at it. So by you just sk sketch out a good composition of a character and for, for like the extent of design dust the extent <laughs> I'm so old I'm, I'm throwing dust up from my hands um, to the extent is you can make a human and make it blue like of oh, that blue human that means alien and you don't need to worry more about that uh, unless you want to be a concept designer then you should probably expand that a little bit more right so and don't worry so much about if you don't use references. You can always add references post-creation, post-sketch. Just think about it like you're exploring uh, visuals. And then if you like what you're doing, it's like, oh, I, that looks great. I wonder what that would look like with reference. Or I wonder what, how that would look like if I would expand that more. Right, so let's go back to uh, the question about uh, in, in, intensive practice from Lynch. Uh, how I placed how I placed the forms in this image, and it comes down to value the shape design uh, so far. And uh, I've explained it many times before, and I also explained it in my um, TAD talk, not TED talk, but TAD talk, the art department talk uh, from last year. And it's about breaking it down in basic understanding of what is required, what constitutes a good image. Uh, and it's about, I, I may, I, I make in my, CG, in my lectures and classes, I make the analogy of a chessboard, right? a chessboard that you can't change the size of the squares on. And you can only adjust the values of the squares. You have full range of value changes. But for the sake of simplicity, you have three values to change the chessboard. But the chess squares on the board themselves, they can't change. But you can create different pictures using different values, right? So the next step is you can't change the value, but you can change the size of the squares. So you can... Uh, arrange the sizes of the squares differently and you'll have an absolutely interesting image beyond a reasonable doubt you know you'll definitely be able to do some cool stuff by just shifting the size and placement of the squares of the chessboard but they're still going to be black and white right so it's the same idea uh, of design right so when i sketched out you saw that i put down basic shapes first basic placements and then I started expanding the placement and the shapes of those accordingly. So I, I, I on purpose made a big tail 
to counterweight the, the big top. But they are at different shapes, and you can see all these little extra details. They are not equal size, they are the different distribution, and the distribution itself doesn't matter. It's about um, the relationship between them. So when you're designing, you should have a natural or more leaning natural hierarchy of shapes uh, based on certain design principles. One of the most basic design principles are 70-30 uh, rule, golden ratio, or 80-20, or 90-10, but they are the same. They, they try to communicate the same thing, and it's about offsetting balance, offsetting balance in posture, offsetting balance in shapes, offsetting balance in values, offsetting balance in materials. You don't want the character to be all one material, you want some variation, right? So that you can play them against each other or with each other. Um, so it's the same idea. So it's this, the principle of, of boiling an idea down to basics and then expanding the basics. Um, and I've talked about this on multiple, multiple streams, that it's, it's all down to understanding what you're doing, breaking it down in, in basic steps, and then learning those steps, and then smashing the steps together so that you do multiple steps at one time. And you can make, as you understand and grasp fully each step, you can expand them and uh, make them more advanced. But in order for you to practice shape designs, you have to design shapes. And if you, if you don't design shapes and you jump straight to illustration, you are not practicing the shapes the same way as you would uh, if you would be designing. And if you don't worry about light, and if you don't worry about uh, brush marks, and worry about what are the shapes that I'm drawing, you're going to be approaching the idea absolutely differently. And it's the same as me not even drawing before i even start drawing i start playing around with the idea of what is an alien mechanic is it walking four arms five arms three heads blue <laughs> you know, it's, it's all down to those aspects so now for example i've come down with a shape of an alien but looking at this and if i would put it somewhere you wouldn't go oh that's a mechanic Right. That's an alien, clearly. A manta ray squid, manta ray squirrel mermaid alien. But there's not a lot of mechanic. So I need to give it props. So that then the idea is, what kind of prop do I add to this mechanic? Is it mechanic as we perceive what a mechanic is? That is a design element. You know, if I give it, if I give this mermaid a wrench, <laughs> you go, oh, mechanic. But what if I give this alien an alien wrench? Would we go, oh, mechanic? No, we won't because that this alien wrench doesn't exist. We can't draw a parallel to it unless it is described in function. So if we start showing like there's some sort of biotech uh, display maybe, and in this handy, holds another little thing and then it okay then we can start understanding okay it seems to be some sort of device and some some sort of input device maybe it's adjusting some values or maybe it's a mechanic that way right so and that is just one of thousands of different solutions that we could come up with and then the the design solution is what kind of shapes am i using to describe the design you know is it a circle is it a rectangle blob and then with those, with, uh, within those parameters, we can design something completely different. Hey, Gino Lab, how's it going? Zealin. Yeah, exactly. But that's, that's my point, right? There's nothing wrong, just to reiterate uh, and point something out, uh, as alien. it's nothing wrong giving the alien a wrench. The question is, 
when it comes down to it. Is it the right design decision based on the things you want to communicate? Maybe the wrench isn't the important part and maybe the wrench is perfectly suitable for the scenario we're going to see this alien. Lynch. Oh, there's a lot of them. Uh, <laughs> good luck. Um, one probably good start would be on YouTube when I design for uh, Art Station Challenge. I think that would be a good start. We kind of played around with a lot of design there, at least at the top of my head. Uh, but we have done over the years a lot of designs, so it's going to be hard to find out, but there is definitely a lot of episodes in the past where I go through design. Um, so 80-20 rule on this one. Um, give me a second, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll explain it to the best of my abilities. So 80-20 rule or 70-30, it's about, uh, it has multiple functions and multiple depths. It's not just one dimensional uh, solution. There's not one way to use the 80-20 rule. Um, one example would be if I would color this, I wouldn't want a split between red and blue evenly distributed. So it's 50% blue, 50% red. It would look boring, right? Like this. One second. All right. Boring. But what if we do it like that? That is automatically more interesting to look at, <laughs> right? You can't argue with it. Is this or that? The 50-50 split naturally becomes constructive, uh, not interesting to look at, and stiff. So the same goes for uh, if we think about the shapes. I haven't split the character in half. The the big to medium to small shapes are not even. They're offset. There's numerically different amount of things poking out. And all these things, right? It's a deliberate offset so that it becomes more interesting to look at. Pro for the two. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, that's a very important thing. That's also the role of an art director uh, is to have the ability to get a design and go, okay, the idea is fantastic. You know, what a unique idea. But we have to dumb it down. We have to simplify it. We have to make it a lot more uh, relatable and tangible and understandable. So it requires you to simplify a, an idea or take a turn or remove parts that becomes too, too advanced and too crazy and too out there because it won't communicate correctly. Or you as a designer have chosen the wrong uh, building blocks to describe the idea and the idea becomes convoluted or... or hard to instantly recognize so the question is is like um, it is again something i talked about on my lecture that's available for the subscribers uh, is the napkin test napkin test being uh, you can scale down a design into some of the basics and you can do that with narrative and you can do that with color and you can do that with shapes um, so the idea is when you design something uh, with narrative tools 
what are the tools that you're going to use to describe the character and the more layers of those designs you have the harder it is going to be to communicate or, or the more layers you need you need to simplify the means of communication you know a good example of it is this right this manta ray squir squirrel mermaid ish alien it's very the shape itself is very advanced that's why I have, for example, mermaid-like wings. So you go, oh, uh, manta ray-like wings and manta ray-like uh, ending, right? So, and, and kind of like a bushy tail of version of a alien uh, mermaid squirrel uh, manta ray. So you understand what you're looking at, right? I could have gone way more abstract, but then that, that natural step of what is a mermaid or what is a squirrel or what is a manta ray that's going to be harder and harder to communicate and it's going to require a lot more work to communicate that to you and in the end is that worth communicating what is the um, there is something called usp a game that is called unique selling point and uh, a good example of that is as an example these puzzle games on mobiles right it's bejeweled and whatever, whatever. None of them really have a unique selling point because all of them have the same principle and you can't really go too far away from it because it won't be that unique. So what they have to resort to is, is functions. So you can, on oh, this puzzle game, bejeweled puzzle game, it's with birds or whatever, you know the USP becomes minimal while while in a design for a game um, the game itself has a USP you know what sets it aside from as a shooter oh it has battle battle royale but all the other games have battle royale so what's the difference oh this battle royale is uh, four versus four versus uh, compared to hundred uh, versus everyone so that becomes that unique selling point. So it's the same approach with design. What is the unique selling point of the design? And you have to also design the design based on around those decisions that you're making. So my, I'd say my unique selling point on this design would be the flying aspect. It's not walking and four arms and alien technology. Um, but that sounds like too much, right? So the whole, so I based the whole idea around that he's not walking. It's not walking. It's a flying alien. That's the unique selling point. If I, you would r put this mechanic in a row of mechanics, let's say you all design your own mechanic and you haven't seen my stream, you would design them differently, right? And question would be how many of those mechanics that you've done are unique amongst each other and for those who would stand out you would have added something uh, different to the mix of a mechanic right like zeolin said oh i added a wrench right? that that itself is a statement is that the tool isn't the unique selling point maybe the character is the unique selling point or maybe the color is the unique selling point you know like in uh, Guardians of the Galaxy, this, the the pirates that uh, that are in the first uh, movie hunting the main guy, they are blue, or the 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 guy is blue, right? He's not just a normal space pirate; he's a blue space pirate. He's the the boss, right? So he has an extreme unique selling point, but he has two unique selling points: is is his tool, the the whistle arrow or whatever it is. And his color, right? So if you would put him with other blue space pirates, his would be then he would have the brain hawk and the whistle thing, or maybe all of the blue ones in that world have a brain hawk and the whistle thing. So maybe that's not the unique selling point. Maybe then his his. Uh, whistling sounds between his teeth is his selling point or his his you know it's, it's it's all about quantifying and simplifying and making 
what the, the decisions clear communicated. If that makes sense. Uh, Ritas, um, professionally, when I do work, uh, I do uh, mood boards, I do reference, I research, uh, unless the client provides the research and they say, this is the direction we want to base and if it's something on. And then I, I do the, the exact same thing and uh, I've been talking about. I, I start developing ideas, I start taking those parameters that they give me in my mind and go, what is a cool combination of that? What comes to mind? Let's say alien mechanic, right? Maybe they provide a reference to a movie or maybe they provide a home planet or whatever. Oh, they're, they're all spider people. All right, so spider people mechanics. What can I do with that? They do mechanic work upside down. They uh, hoist their machines with spider webs. They are uh, have multiple eyes. They are meat eaters <laughs> or you know, whatever you could come up with right and then you start designing and based on all those things i talked about about shape design value design usb all these things so you, you try to come up with three separate a minimum of three separate ideas clear communicated strong directions and you push each direction as far away from each other as you can so you don't have um, overlaps so that when you provide an idea to the client, the client gets a fresh idea and then they can be picky and then they can choose. Worse would be, which is has, was a huge standard in the industry for a long time, was the shaved marine guy with this weapon or shaved marine guy with that weapon or shaved marine guy with this meatball uh, power armor. Uh, and if you would set them, stand them all next to each other, it would be like, who's who? Like, I, who? So l gladly that moved away because um, it was, um, it started trending and gamers liked it because someone had come up with a really cool solution. And then that became a trend and that kind of, uh, fed the trend until people stopped caring like you can pinpoint a lot of games like uh, let's say five years ago or when they were released five years ago which means they were done three years before that there's a lot of that those designs uh, happening and uh, sadly <laughs> but the, I'm glad that the they're putting more weight on, on, on unique characters nowadays. But I'll, unfortunately, a lot of the designs, they are, um, a lot of the design decisions are gimmicky rather than character driven. Um, but this is the nature of the game, I think. It's because it's a uh, game you know, rather than move. Right. So this is the alien um, mechanic. Pretty interesting, I would say. Um, tomorrow, I think I will do um, value design, color design on top of it. Um, if this would be for a client, this would be one idea for alien mechanic. So the next idea I would design, I would exclude manta shapes I would exclude uh, forearms unless it's a design principle that I have to include um, right so then I would need to come up with a new combination of interesting shapes and a new combination of USB a new combination of uh, narrative so that when they see it they go alien mechanic I get it instantly but it stands apart from the next one or the previous one. So I do that three times. So one, two, three different designs, completely different approaches, completely different values, completely different, all these things. Uh, 
uh, Pro 42. I mean, I spent half an hour pl with talking and <laughs> not doing so much work on a design, right? So I, I usually aim for one hour per per design to start with, just to throw down the idea. And I draw out all three design ideas uh, on uh, around one hour each. So I spent uh, more or less half the day designing out three unique ideas. And then I distribute the remaining four hours, usually in enhancing. And if I get them to a point where I can send them and they will, the client will see what I mean within this uh, one day worth of work, I will send it. But if I feel like, okay, if I send this, they might get the idea. I'm not going to send it because that's a wasted effort. So what I'll do is I hold it back and spend whatever necessary time to tweak the design and tweak the balance um, to make an interesting presentation in that sense of shapes and character. Captain Boss. Um, they don't require a time limit. They want a good idea. And they don't want to pay you to sit for a week to sketch out an idea because that's they're paying you for every day. Um, or they pay you for a finished concept and it doesn't matter. Then it matters to you. You shouldn't spend a week on designing uh, one design that they might go, no, we don't like it. Another one, please. So it's a matter of efficiency. So you need to balance efficiency versus productivity. And if you draw too fast, you won't communicate the idea or you're using too, um, too weak. You choose weak, um, too straightforward communicative tools and the, the design comes off flat. And there is a balance between efficiency, speed, and uh, accuracy. And you have to spend time thinking about the combination of what you're putting down and how clearly that is communicated. Then if that is the, if that's delivered, then if it's 30 minutes or a day, it doesn't matter if the idea is strong and well communicated. So both, what you should do in your afraid of timeline, you should be clear about it with your client saying, I usually design the first stage being the idea pass. Let's say hypothetically you say both that I take three days to design something good. And then I spend two days refining the idea based on your feedback. And then I spend two days finalizing it, painting it, whatever. And you tell that to the client, like, this is usually my setup. Is that acceptable? Then they go, oh, it won't fit our timeline or it'll cost too much. Then you can say, all right, how about I spend two days with the idea first, first pass, one day of refinement and two days of finalizing it. Then they go, mm -hmm, okay. Then you can mention that. Then I would appreciate prompt feedback, clear direction for the second stage or first stage to maximize my time. And then they go, oh, right, you got it. Then it's up to you to deliver. But that's the whole negotiation part before you start a contract. That should always be discussed. Both, exactly. That's one of the most things I always talk about is you have to know your process. <laughs> Spend a day thinking about your process. How, how, what do you do when you have the most successful image? Do you do small thumbnails first? Do you do big line art? Do you splash coffee on paper and then see what comes out? 
Do you watch a movie? Do you do research? Uh, do you sketch upside down? <laughs> Any way works, as long as you get there in the end, you know? Whatever works for you, works for you. Uh, so you have to, you have to understand what you're doing. Eric Eriki, yeah, exactly. You, you can't say I'll do it in a day and you will only deliver a hand while they ask you for a character. So you have to do a test run. Give yourself a test. Okay, I have to design a character. I'm going to do it as fast as I can. Write down when you start, what day it is, what time it is. And then write down when you stop to, to take a break. And then you write down when you start and when you stop, start and stop. And then write down when you're finished. How long did that take? Did you render it? Did you do line art? Did you do flat fills? What did you do? Does it, I mean, it's different, right? Steven, I like creating the story and characters within the illustrator, illustration. Any game that uses marketing art, <laughs> Steven. Any. <laughs> so every game, you should have clients everywhere. Everyone wants illustrations. Captain Boss, you shouldn't either schedule under max pressure you need to give yourself breathing room you need to give yourself enough tension to push but enough relaxation for you to go oh i'm going to enjoy this uh eric eric how long will it take even though they ask for a work consultant yeah that's a good one all right enough with enough Stop. Right. Let's. Um, who can we raid? Hmm. Um, any suggestions? Okay, we're going to raid someone we haven't... Well, I think we raided only once. I think that's how you spell it. One second. Right. Pro42. Uh, I'm not going to raid Pro, uh, Studio Colorphobia today. I'm going to raid someone else. The, this person is painting oil. He's painting a horse, I think. It's pretty cool. Looks good. No idea. We only rated this person once, uh, so we'll see what happens. Have a great day, everyone. Good night. See you tomorrow morning. We're going to do design, more design on her. It. Bye.